Hi BookTube, it's Sunday so I'm going to do a weekly wrap up. My cat's here again. <laughs> uh, I just like sat down so she immediately jumped up. It's like a running theme with her. Um, so anyway, I'm going to talk about the books I read from Sunday to yesterday. Um, I haven't read as many books this week. I mean, I still have, but um, I've been really um, making some progress with the Wheel of Time, uh, I'll, the World book and my third mammoth, uh, Moving On. Um, so that's kind of distracting me from these other books, but there's nothing to complain about. I'm still reading. Um, so this, I'm just going to um, talk about them in order of which I read them. So this is the first one, which I just love the title, Live and Let Chai. And this is by, by Brie Baker. It's the first book in a seaside cafe mystery. And this is following Everly Swan. Um, and it's set in uh, like coastal North Carolina on an island. So it has a really nice beachy theme. And she is opening up a, a tea shop. And it's a cozy mystery. So um, there's murder and mayhem that ensues. And so um, she is involved as a detective because um, her tea is... Uh, considered suspicious because it's um, her tea was poisoned and so they think that she is the murderer and so in order to redeem herself she is out um, to find the killer and so um, it's like <laughs> her relationship with the town and trying to set up her business as a tea shop but also um, she's kind of like you know um, considering all these different suspects and who can she trust and um, of course because she's investigating um, the murderer the real murderer is um, uh, threatening her with threatening her tea shop. Um, but in a way, I really like the characters in this. Uh, she has, I think it was two aunts. Yes, I'll say two aunts um, that were just really funny. They were really nice. Um, every time you uh, interacted with them, they were very like strong personalities. Um, one of them was like very stern and kind of unbending, and the other one was like a hippie ish kind of aunt. Where she's very like live and let live, let live, and um, so it was really nice her interactions with them, and so um, it'll be nice to see them pop up in the next book in the series. This next book I read, um, I listened to it on audiobook because um, I figured if I'm going to do four mammoths, one of them being an audiobook would be a good decision, just so I can give myself basically ten days per mammoth, and then this audiobook I can listen to um, throughout the month. And so this was actually written and narrated by the author and this is Vietnam an epic tragedy 1945 to 1975 by Max Hastings I've been meaning to read Max Hastings for a while he read I mean, he read, read he wrote a book called Inferno about um, World War II that I've been wanting to read but I just happened to get this one first um this is a pretty long audiobook I think it's a page I, I had the page up before but when I switched it to the audiobook it just giving it's giving me hours it's uh 33 hours so it's a pretty long audiobook. Um, as far as, like, because when I talk about audiobooks, I want to also talk about the book and the narration. For me, um, he didn't have many, like, inflections. It wasn't, like, um, like a really, like, engaging uh, narration of the book. He was kind of, like, steady, like, one-note tone. And so um, I had a hard time, like, really paying attention to the audiobook because it was kind of like a droning on kind of a voice. And so I think I would have got a lot more out of it. Um, reading it physically myself and so um, this will probably be a book I, I will want to reread to get um, more out of it but um, he's a really good writer um, it's focusing on like the political and social aspects of Vietnam and he puts a, um, a huge emphasis on France because like the, the, uh, 1945-1975 was of course not just focusing on um, the United States part of it, it was also focusing on um, France's uh, interaction with Vietnam and he makes a point to say that um, he doesn't think either side should win, like Vietnam or the Western side, because um, there's been so many mistakes and blunders and um, on both sides. And he he he's really he pulls in a lot of um, views viewpoints from both sides and like through memoirs and interviews and reports and newspapers and there's so so much information like packed in here. And he does a really good job of like putting conc concise, um, I think it's concise as you can be with a huge mammoth um, on the Vietnam War. So if you want like a really in-depth, um, multi-perspective, well-written uh, book on Vietnam, then this would be a good one. But I would recommend the physical book over the audio book. 
Um, this next one was a really cute, cozy mystery. Um, it's a camper and criminals cozy mystery. Uh, this is Beaches, Bungalows, and uh, Burglaries by Tonya Cap Cap Capes. Um, and this I chose to read because um, Sarah from Steeped in Books, which I'll leave a link below um, to her channel. Um, this is the read-along she's doing for, because she's one of the um, hosts for March Mystery Madness. And this was a book that um, she chose for everyone to read. And so I just happened to get it from my library as um, as a book to read. And this uh, starts out with, I never remember her character's name, uh, Mae West. And she is like a young, I think she's like 25 or 30. And she gets married to a very well-to-do man who is like 60 or 61. So he's much older. Um, but, you know, she disregards that because, you know, she loves him. He's a very generous man with his money. And um, so, of course, like, you know, she's kind of like a kept uh, wife, as you, um, you could say. But um, her life gets turned upside down when, you know, she's living. I think she's like five years or five or six years she was married to him. And then out of the blue, he gets arrested um, because he, um, he has been doing, like, these schemes and like money laundering and stuff like that. And so he goes to jail. And so she is left destitute without anything. Um, she hadn't been working in, in, during this time. And so, you know, she hadn't, she doesn't have a career to fall back on. But um, he has left in, um, in her name only, this uh, trailer park. It was the Happy Trails Kip, uh, Trailer Park in Kentucky. And this whole time they've been living in New York City, like, you know, living like the high life. So um, she gets kind of like, and she's, so it's the trailer, Happy Trails Trailer Park. And she also gets this yellow or um, camper that's on the cover. And so she just goes from living in this like really like nice high life apartment, you know, in New York. So she gets stuck in the little RV and um, she makes her way there. And um, from what she's heard from the lawyer who tells her about this happy trails campground, uh, the brochures are really nice. Um, like if you're going to be living in an RV park, you know, you want to live like a really nice one. And so the pictures are very misleading because when she arrives, it's a very rundown place. Because her husband, who has owned the campground, um, has been putting any money into it. He's basically taking money away without any returning any, any investment into it. And so it's very run down. And um, so the mur the cozy mystery part is, because um, I, I, I was like, oh, we know where's the mystery in this. Is, of course, there's a dead body that pops up. And it's her husband that um, has escaped from jail and ends up in the lake of the RV park. And so of course she's being suspected because you know, she had kind of all the reason in the world to want him, wish him ill will and want him dead because um, all her money's gone, all her security's gone and she's left at this RV park. So um, that's the cozy mystery angle of this book. I, I really enjoyed it. It was a really nice like fluffy uh, read to get to. And let's see. This next one is a graphic novel that I read. Um, I was just browsing my library and I saw, because like, sometimes on the weekends, like I wake up in the morning, instead of like watching cartoons or something, I will like to read comic books. And so um, I decided to go with this one. Get the cover. It's Book Love by Debbie Tung. And this is like an idea, as you can see, for um, the art style. And I had like, high expectations for this because, you know, I love um, bookish um, comic books or bookish books, you know, anything to do with, um, you know, how people read or how they enjoy books. Um, but it was very, like, superficial. Um, like, some of the panels, it was just, like, one um, one page was a little story. And it, I found it kind of be repetitive. Um, it was a lot of it of, like, you know, hauling books. And, you know, it's all about, like, smelling the books, stuff like that, you know, I like. But I wanted more to it, you know, also being maybe for more of a storyline or like, you know, her background in reading or, you know, and kind of like a, maybe like a memoir of her reading or, you know, maybe at bookstores or libraries. But it was very much, you know, hauling books, going to the bookstore and buying them, which is nice. But I think there's a lot more to books than just that one aspect. Um, so let's see. The next one is a Nora Roberts' Vision in White which has a wedding cover on it. And this is the first book in her Bride Quartet uh, series. And there, it's a story about four um, women who are working, um, it's called Vows, 
which is like a wedding planner, wedding venue site. And so th in this book, we're focusing on the photographer, Mackenzie, and it's her story of how how she's got involved in this business. And they, all these four friends are grouped together. You know, they play wedding as children and they, it, like, they actually made a career out of it because um, one of the women have a really nice house that she's like renovated and turned into a really nice place. And so the setting was really nice. It was set in like, um, like a small town, uh, Connecticut during the winter time. So that had a really nice um, cozy feel to it. And um, anyway, for this, it's um, Mackenzie. And it's about, you know, her, her business with the friends. And it's also about her, like, relationship with her parents. She doesn't have the best relationship with them. And so that's kind of led into her um, feeling how she can't really commit to men. She can't, you know, s fall in love with them. Because she's always been reserved because of her relationship with her parents. And so this book really focuses on her trying to overcome those worries and stresses um, to actually have a relationship. And the relationship was really cute. And this last book I'm going to talk about is another comic book. Um, I can, and this is like a really like, I love the colors in this one. It's Jim and the Holograms. And it's by Kelly Thompson is the author. And Ross Campbell and Sophie Campbell, I'm assuming are the illustrators. And, um, this is the volume one called Showtime. And it's focusing on basically two band groups. And it has a very like 80s theme to it, like how they're dressing and the colors. So it was a really uh, nice read. It's like a, there are two like rock groups. And one of them is like um, very angsty and very like kind of like, it looks kind of like heavy metal. And like, and, and the um, main uh, singer of this is like really like a mean, like the bully of the story. And then on the other side, this um, in the picture, you have these like, uh, cast of um, this group, this band group, who are more sweet and you know the likable uh, protagonist side, and so it's like it's their clash because the this other group that's like the evil one um, is already really successful, and so the nice group is trying to um, compete with them, and so the, um, the mean group is being really devilish and trying to prevent the um, the good guys from. Um, really competing being successful with them because um they think that you know they are really talented the good group they, they see that they're, they're really talented and so um they're trying to uh find a way to prevent them from winning this competition and so yeah it was a really nice uh, uh comic book about you know girl power and it had um some really nice relationships in there and it had like some songwriting i really liked how they designed it because like when they were singing songs and um, so this banner like walk um on the page you know, had like the different squares but then like when the songs were playing it had like this extreme like, of like lyrics weaving its way um on the page which was uh, really nice i really like the illustrations in this and i do plan on um continuing on in this series and i guess when i was reading the introduction i guess it's like a i don't know nothing about this um series but i guess it was a tv show i believe um, is what the uh, author of this was saying. That she took a remake and turned it into a comic book. So I might have to check out the TV show. So yeah, these are the books I read this week. Let me know if you've read any of them. And um, I hope to have a really good productive week this coming. Um, I'm hoping to wrap up my third mammoth. <laughs> and um, so maybe make a little more headway on some of the other books. Because I had a very in ambitious uh, TBR planned for this month. So I'm hoping to really make some good headway um, these last weeks of March. I can't believe it's already halfway through uh, March. This month is just flying by. <laughs> so yeah, um, thanks. See you soon, book two.